Hi, welcome to everyone's favourite segment, the mailbag. And yes, it is mailbag Monday. There it is. And yes, we've reached way past the Sagan limit again. Sagan's not here, but it's much taller than he is. Oh, I haven't even got the tilt on the camera tripod here to see it all. Look, crazy. Anyway, I've got a little bit of time. I thought I'd open some mail. This one's from uh, Vincent. Himpy, um, free electron on the forum. There's some really awesome stuff in here, which I'm going. I know it's in here. I'm going to have to do a video in its own right. So wait for that one. It definitely won't be today, but it will be upcoming. So I've got some postcards and other things. So I won't actually go uh, like review anything today. I think I'll just open them up. And if they happen to be something really, really interesting that needs a review, then well, uh, sorry, but it's going to have to wait. So I'll just see if I can get through. So this is basically just a. Uh, unboxing type mailbag let's get to it so yes I've got less than an hour to shoot this and you know you'd be surprised um, at how little footage you can actually shoot in an hour if you uh, try and do these sorts of videos anyway postcard Yellowstone National Park beauty let's check it out look at that ah oh, that's like a uh, it's a hot spring beautiful color is that like a natural color rendition on that Anyway, that is a beautiful photo, obviously taken from the top of a hill up here, looking down onto that. I'd love to know if that's a uh, false colour or has been colour enhanced or whatever. Looks like a boardwalk. I can see some people out there walking around, wandering around. There you go. Anyway, who is this from? Uh, it's from Perfect Dissidence. Hey Dave, last weekend I got a... I got a wild hair? You got a wild hair? Hmm. Huh. And decided to take a trip to the world's first national park. Uh, saw this in the gift shop. Thought you might like it. I really like the blog. Keep up the good work. Thank you very much. Two hours from where I live in Idaho Falls. I've never been to either place, unfortunately. Always wanted to go to Yellowstone. I tried to fit it into one of my uh, US trips once, but uh, it was just too out of the way, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, that is awesome. And yes, it is. Uh, it was the world's first national park, but since then... Ah, Australia's well overtaken, I think, and we have World Heritage listed areas. Every time I go to a national park in the US and I talk to a ranger, there I go, do you guys have any World Heritage listed stuff? And they go, what's World Heritage? And it's like, yeah, okay. Anyway, thanks for that. That is awesome. Thank you, Perfect Dissidents. Um, oh, we've got a couple of other envelopes. Here's another postcard. Here we go. Ta-da! Four seasons in Helsinki, Finland. Wind, sleet, snow, and rain. I love it. Hi to all my... Oh, it's almost the same colour as my mat there. Beautiful. Hi to all my uh, viewers in um, Helsinki, in, well, in Finland, in the uh, Nordic regions up there. Always wanted to get there. Uh, Helsinki, you and Mike have the world's best electronics blogs. Well, thank you very much on behalf of both myself and Mike. You inspire me for I also uh, write a hobbyist electronics and signals blog. Hey, there we go. Windytan.blogspot.com. Probably should try and get your own. Um, I mean, it's a good starter spot um, to do uh, blogspot or, uh, you know, WordPress or something like that.com. But it's always uh, better to get your own domain name. It doesn't cost a much. But uh, thank you very much. Ooh, Una, double O N A. How do you pronounce that? Una, Honor, Raising. Oh. And it's got the little symbols above it. Sorry, I'm, I'm Australian. I don't know how to pronounce anything, but thank you very much. I'm going to call you Una. Good on you, Una. That's awesome. From the Sumi in Finland. Oh, look at the lovely stamp there. They're a, like a, um, it's some sort of, some sort of berry or something like that. Is it the Sumi? I don't know. Anyone? Let me know. And I just re realised the misspelling there, of course. Is, <laughs> have you done that? Una, or is that, uh, or is that actually a goofed up uh, card, and they've actually couldn't get their grammar right? Four seasons in Helsinki, <laughs> love it. Next up from Yankee Land again, Jay Tyman. Thank you very much, Jay from Denver, Colorado. Another place I haven't been to. I would love to go. Cause look at Denver, Colorado. Look at it. Oh, I want to go there. I want to climb that mountain. Oh man. I don't know. Anyway, this one's not a postcard. Well, it could be. It feels like a postcard. It's postcard-like. Um, but uh, let's have a look. Yay! Look at that. 
it is some sort of postcardy type thing. Let's have a look here. Sorry, I have to keep like changing the exposure on this. Like, you know, if you bring something bright in, like I've got auto exposure at the moment, then it comes back up, you know, you put something bright in. I could fix the focus. So it gets the white envelope, like, uh, sorry, not the focus, the uh, exposure. Uh, there's a button on the back of my camera. I use it all the time to, I've set it to change the exposure because that's probably the second most uh, thing, uh, well, probably the most uh, used thing apart from, oh, well, no, yeah, it probably is the most used function on the camera is the uh, exposure. But then it's a bit dark because it had to expose that white before. So I've got to press the button on the back here and you'll often see a little shake in the camera like that. It's gone back to auto. Anyway, Jim. It's Jim. G'day, Jim. My name is Jim Timon, an audio hobbyist in Colorado, USA. Although my skills and knowledge is a bit small a fraction of yours, oh, don't say that, I have to uh, thank you for your blog. It is entertaining and very informative. That's what I go for. I go for um, infotainment, I guess you could call it. I always learn something by watching. Thank you very much, Jim. Awesome. Look at that. What have we got? Your ticket. We're writing. Wish I could travel again. I don't know. I got a family now. It's hard. Makes me miss it. I've never been on a cruise ship though. <laughs> Next up is Milena Rodriguez from Portugal. Don't get too many from Portugal in uh, Covila in Portugal. Hi to all my viewers in Portugal. Urgent. Please send back as soon as possible. Oops, I may have had this one for a while. What was it sent up? Yeah, 22nd of uh, April there. Sorry about the urgent. Um, yeah, oops. That's what happens with the uh, relentless mailbag Monday, I'm afraid. The problem is, on Mondays, I've got to take care of Sagan. It's Daddy Daycare Monday. And uh, I never get a chance to do it. And I'm always behind the eight ball. What do we got? We've got a... Some sort of image of uh, some people? I don't know. Let's read it. Hi Dave, I'm not sure if you remember me, but my boyfriend David and I sent you a postcard from Covila, Portugal some time ago. I do remember that. That rings a bell. Yes. You may be wondering why I sent you that orange... Or that orange ribbon? That was an orange... Oh! Sorry. There's an orange ribbon. Look at that. It's got some sort of crest on there. Scientena Laboratoria Petriona. Something to do with Science Laboratory a Ribbon. Let's have a look. Um, and here comes the explanation. David ends this year his electrical engineering course. In Portugal, the students have this awesome tradition to give away a ribbon to family, friends and colleagues. Oh, isn't that nice? Later, there is going to be a ceremony called Bacao des Pastas. They all use their... UBI cloths, clothes, and the final result is going to look similar to this, but with orange and Bordeaux ribbons. Very nice. There you go. Right. So that's the, um, yeah, I thought it looked like a sort of a, you know, a um, ceremony, a, a graduation ceremony kind of thing. Very nice. Awesome, Dave, that you finished your course. Brilliant. Well, I challenge you to write on the ribbon whatever you want and send it back to me as soon as you can. Oh, damn it. Oh, sorry. We wish to wish good... We used to wish good luck, a successful career, and stuff like that. You're a kind of David's idol, and he is going to be thrilled to receive an undersigned ribbon from you, and I'm going to be so thankful. Obviously, I'm not going to surprise him. He's only going to see the ribbon. <laughs> He's probably going to see it on video. He's probably already uh, uh, at his ceremony. Did it say when? Oh, I'm sorry. What a bummer. Thank you for teaching, David. Thank you for your time, and thank you for the undersigned ribbon. I know you're going to send me back. All right. I assume you sent your... Ah, oh, I've blacked out your return address. Oops, that's a standard thing I do here on the mailbag. Um, I'll try and read that. I'm sure I can still uh, expose that and uh, send it back. Signed. No worries. P.S. Sorry for the bad English. It's better than mine. Next up is R. Uh, Spitzenfeldt. That kind of rings a bell. I think I... May have had one. Oh, that's Stefan, is it? I don't know. They may have it back to front. I don't know. Anyway, from Germany. Hi to all my German viewers. There's heaps of them. Deutsche Post. Love Germany. Been there. Lovely flowers. That's great. Priority. Yeah, there's no, probably no point sending priority when it takes me forever to uh, open these things. Leds. Sorry about that, folks. I just don't get around to... Oh, God. How do I do this? Let's rip it. I just don't get around to... Doing the mailbag. I should, but um, you know, by the time, like, hey, 
that's, that's cool. A robot dog. Awesome. But uh, yeah, I don't... Um, oh, it's a little... Look, look at this. Oh, there we go. Tindy.com. World Wide Web at Tindy.com. And we'll read the note, but I've got a little board with 0.1 inch headers, and it's got a little dog dog symbol on there. I'll have to get the uh, macro lens to see that, but there's a bunch of LEDs. Um, oh, yeah, there's a couple of dropper resist SMD uh, dropper resistors on the back, but there's no micros. And let's go to the letter. Hi, Dave. I don't have any lingerie, so this little thing we'll have to do instead. It's an SMD kit, but I've assembled it for you. Still waiting for you to test my previous doodad. Oh, sorry, Robert. What's your previous doodad? I know, I'm hopeless. I've got a whole shelf full of stuff from the mailbag, kits and things that I have to assemble, and I want to assemble, and, um, or, you know, or review, or do, or, you know, have my way with, or whatever, but unfortunately, oh, man, so many. Oh, come from chemical physical letters. There we go. It's come from some journal. Subtle differences in some polymetric materials. This effect can be put to good use. For example, the observed effect can serve as a contrast me uh, mechanism in polymer nexif of very useful applications in polymer science. The morphology, ooh, morphology, wank word of the day. There we go. The morphology in uh, polyolefin blends has already been imaged without having to resort to chemical etching or sustaining. Very nice. There you go. It's absolutely nothing to do with these LEDs whatsoever. Love the smiley face. There we go. Blogspitsandfail.org with the open source hardware symbol. Yeah, it's just a little lead driver. There it is. Has the little uh, robot dog on the front. I like that. Can light it up with the multimeter. All right, let's have a look here. Got the multimeter. Fluke 87. What do we get? Oh, hello. The wrong lead is lighting up. That bottom lead is lighting up. I'm going to have to assume, I'm getting the right pins there, I'm going to have to assume that they are, ah, they're in parallel, of course. So if I swap the leads here, this one here, ta-da, parallel. And I just uh, googled, there it is, worldwidewebtindy.com. I didn't know about this. It's the marketplace for makers. That's their um, slogan where you can sell your hardware designs, presumably all open source hardware designs. And they've got a cute little robot dog. Check it out. And next up, we have one from Justin Roder. Thank you very much, Justin, from Chinoa, Illinois, in the United States of America. I know it well, Chinoa, Illinois. Just um, southwest of Chicago there, just before uh, Bloomington. That crazy Aussie bloke. This is where you send stuff, PO Box 7949. Still have no idea what they... Uh, Think about that at the local post office. Global USA, global what forever? Global what forever? Globe forever? That's not very USA. USA is all about USA, USA, USA. You know, they, they don't know what happens. You know, a globe? No, the world's, you know, uh, <laughs> 6,000 years old. And, uh, <laughs> and well, a globe, geez, it may as well be flat. According to some Americans, anyway. Sorry, I won't stereotype, especially not uh, uh, Justin, and especially not anyone from Chinoa, Illinois. Sure, there's no flat earthers there. So let's open it up. And uh, that crazy Oz. Awesome. Envelope with inside an envelope. What have I got? Let's check it out. Oh, gee, oh there's oh, lots, of, lots of bits and bobs in here. Ah, uh, lots of letter. Jeez, there's a whole stack of. Little, I think the macro lenses, a little, oh, all um, RFI, um, shielding, RFI stuff. Various, uh, if you've seen the uh, teardowns, thank you very much, Justin. This is uh, interesting. If you've seen, like, my teardowns of spectrum analyzers and stuff, you'll see this sort of um, RFI uh, gasket. Um, stuff actually between all the metal um, shields and stuff like that. So or various RFI products, by the looks of it. So, interesting. So if you can remember all the letters on there, it looks like we've a complete kit. We've got in, like a description on the other side. It's from Holland uh, Shielding Systems. I don't know if uh, Justin actually works for them or whether or not he just had it and decided to fold it on, because it's interesting. But we've got clip-on gaskets, ultra-soft shield gaskets, 
uh, V-shaped gaskets. I can't read some of this due to the um, on-screen uh, display on the back of my LCD. Because if you don't know, I don't actually look at the product. I look at it through the LCD on the back of the monitor here. And uh, sometimes I, that's why I miss a lot of stuff. Because it's, you know, it's only got a certain resolution on the back of the uh, LCD screen on the camcorder here. So I'm watching that in real time. And uh, it's got uh, like my VU uh, level meter and all sorts of stuff on there. So uh, that can be rather annoying. It obscures all this text. Um, EMI, uh, water seal gasket, knitted mesh gasket, O-profile, D-profile, standard shield, finger strip example, uh, Amucor foil? Mesh foil, conductive fabric, all sorts of... Oh, mu copper. There we go. You've heard me talk about... Mu, where's the mu copper? Where's the mu metal? Sometimes called mu metal. Um, it's the... Uh, o. Mu copper. O. Where's O? There it is. Ah, oh, I don't think I got that. There it is. I don't think I got that at all. No. Bummer. Didn't get the mu metal. Dear Dave. How are things? Pretty awesome, mate. I do this for a living. Can you believe it? How could it not be awesome? Any projects lately? Oh, yeah, if I could ever bloody finish one. Oh, let me tell you. So I heard about this thing called Mailbag that you do on YouTube. That's it. I think it's neat. So also heard about the Plasma Speaker. Yeah, the Plasma Speaker was really cool. Um, is, is it easy to build? Ah, question. Um, yeah, they're pretty easy to build. Just, a, uh, you know, you can um, scrap the parts out of an old uh, TV to uh, get the... Um, uh, to generate the uh, HF and pretty much a bent piece of wire and a 9 volt battery and you know Bob's your uncle uh, just let me know if you have this letter on the EV blog mailbag episode well it's here you gotta watch I don't inform people saying oh, uh, thank you I've received your letter and it'll be on the next mailbag sorry I don't do that it's like a surprise here it is your one's next up there's projects I do and uh, have them on my website and uh, YouTube down Lou is a picture of them awesome we have a TV oscilloscope turns your uh, TV into a scope brilliant LPT binary clock I'm assuming that uh, parallel port yeah I can see parallel port interface there binary clock um, a Christmas ornament a logic probe and a um, 7805 USB charger you can find me at youtube there we go youtube delphi justin he's into delphi i guess thank you very much delphi justin at weebly.com justin roder awesome mate thanks a lot and here is his tv scope circuit three transistors love it couple of inductors there beautiful build it up give it a try if anyone wants to give that a bell let us know how it goes all right, let's measure the resistance of various things we've got here. This cloth, here we go. Let's put it right over there. Oh, very conductive, look at that. That's um, metalized uh, thread, obviously. Very conductive cloth. It's not just uh, dissipative, it is uh, definitely conductive. Next up we have some of this spongy stuff. It's got, looks like some regular sponge on the bottom or ESD sponge there we go that one's very conductive as well what have we got here looks like we've got some foil and backed yeah it's just backed there we go it's foil it's not like hasn't got like a mylar uh, coating on that or anything and then we have one of these really spongy uh, seals there we go they're also incredibly conductive we've got this Looks like an old razor packet or something. Very conductive again. What do we got up here? A big rubber sort of um, end designed to clip over our boards and panels and stuff like that. And that'll be, of course, also very low. Geez, they're all going to be very low. We're not going to get like sort of, you know... Um, oh, here we go. This is like a rubber type stuff. Let's give that a bell. No, nah, there we go. No, that one is uh, not conductive. It's going to be dissipative. And of course, we've just got metal, just a metal uh, honeycomb there. We've got, uh, looks like, just a metal, of course, metal shield on the, uh, sort of like a braid on the outside of a rubber coat in there. Of course, this is just, that's going to be complete. They're all going to be dead shorts. Yep. Yep. There you go. No sort of high resistance stuff at all, sort of like like you'd get with uh, conductive 
uh, foam or something like that. So that's there. We, there it is. Ta -da! Yeah, this is like a, some sort of plastic material with like a conductive cloth mesh. I'm assuming it's conductive. Uh, you know, uh, sandwiched in between there. So of course the plastic won't be conductive. No, of course not. But if you go off into the cloth. Ta-da! Ah, there we go. We have something that's reasonably high resistance there. 50 odd ohms. Interesting stuff. And of course, you can see through it like that, but it is conductive all the way through. Great stuff. So it allows you to uh, completely shield like an opening in a case, but uh, still be able to see through it. I guess you could say like a kind of like your microwave oven door, how it, uh, you know, you can still see through it, but it uh, shields out the uh, 2.45 gig microwave uh, frequency in there. This one would uh, do a much uh, wider range than that because it's very, very fine mesh on that. Brilliant. And a bloody alligator clip. It's not starting to hurt yet. I'll just leave it on there, see how much pain I can tolerate. Mm. Next up we have Ramsey Duany. Duany? <laughs> Duany. I think that's how you pronounce it. From Austin, Texas. Another place I haven't bloody been. Oh man, I'm going to have to do a US state by state road trip one day. Anyway, oh, hey, bunch of students. Hi Dave, we are EE students. I love the uh, copper clad laminate. They've put that on. That's uh, 0.8, that looks like 0.8 millimeter there. Reasonably flexible. <laughs> That's great. I like it. Very novel. We are EE students from Texas and we love your show. Fantastic! Exclamation mark. We run our own site for students and we love it if you checked it out. Turtleneck Hub. Now that's a cool name. Turtleneckhub.com The CD is a song we made just for you. Thanks Ramsey and Danny. Thank you very much guys. Play me. Oh goodness. Definitely is a bit of uh, scrap there. They've uh, somebody's had a hack at the back of that. Don't know what the hell they were doing there and uh, why there's a capacitor there because well I don't see no well there's capacitor like to the top side. I mean this 0.8 millimeter board is going to have some capacitance in it. Hey, I wonder what can we measure it? Tell you what, I just got in these uh, brand new pair of smart tweezers made in Canada beauty. Um, they're not cheap. I've reviewed these before a long long time ago and uh, apparently this is the updated uh, one certificate of calibration. Yeah I'll have to do a review on it. Won't be much of a review because you know really it's, a, it's I think it's pretty similar to last time you know 0.2% resistance, 0.5% capacitance, inductance. It only goes up to uh, measurement range, only goes up to 10 kilohertz uh, though. I think. Anyway, um, there's a good reason to just uh, whip this sucker out and uh, when in doubt, whip it out and uh, get our smart tweezers. Very nice. They're very sexy but very expensive. But anyway, um, they should turn on automatically, I think. No, 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 no. Probably have to press a button. Unless the battery's flat. No, there. There we go. Advanced devices, and now it should auto detect LCNR. 38 milliohms. There we go. So we could actually just probe that down there. 97 milliohms. Depends on the how hard I push it. 52 if I release the pressure a bit. 171, 620. Release the pressure even more. 3 ohms. That kind of stuff. But anyway, look, we should be able to measure the capacitance of this sucker. So, oh, how do I get it in shot? Here we go. Off shot. There we go. Let's measure the capacitance. I assume it's going to do it at one kilohertz there. Make sure I don't touch them if you push too hard on there. Yeah, there you go. 874 picofarads. And of course I can increase that by touching it. My fingers. And if I put more pressure on there, that's going to go up. But there you go. Oh sorry, it's jumped up to 10 kilohertz now. There it is. So 875, so maybe that was uh, at one kilohertz before. So let me get like my Agilent LCR meter, see if we confirm, see if we can confirm 875 picofarads at 10 kilohertz. All right, here we go. Capacitance at 10 kilohertz. Let's see if we get the same value. I can't just clamp that on there. Can't just clip it on because I'd be shorting out both sides. It's a bit touchy, but let's see if we can get it. 
There we go, 876, very, very close. I like it. So that's within like 0.2%, something like that. Let's try, just, I don't know, nice little experiment here. I like it, uh, LCR auto, what do we have? frequency, 10 kilohertz, and uh, oh, we could do LCR auto, but there we go. Let's put on capacitance. Let's see if we get 875 here as well. Oh, look at that, significantly higher. 883. Hmm. And if we switch to series mode, shouldn't make a difference, but let's have a go anyway. No, 883. There we go. So, the IET one, different. Now let's try this XTEC LCR multimeter. Yes, the EEV blog, the only blog in the world that has a mailbag segment and can turn a bit of copper clad PCB into an LCR meter shootout. Here we go. Um, uh, by the way, I think this only does one kilohertz. I'm surprised. Um, I'm not sure why. I thought it was capable of uh, more than that. I can't switch it to 10. Um, Pebcac, I forget. Anyway, oh, oh, look at that. 890, 891. Let's see what it is on the uh, Agilent at one kilohertz. Let's call it 890. Here we go. One kilohertz. Aha, uh -huh, there you go, 886 picofarads. It's near enough, you know, relatively close to the 890. So, um, at the moment, it looks like the um, IET meter is the one that's out. Let's run the IET again at 1 kilohertz. There you go, 1 kilohertz, we're okay. So yeah, I'll have to check the uh, spec, the range, well the uh, specs on the various ranges on the IET one here because it was uh, reading a bit uh, high. I don't know if it's out of uh, tolerance or not. I haven't run the numbers on that, but geez, I don't know. Anyway, the uh, smart tweezers was uh, practically uh, spot on within uh, like 0.2% or a quarter of a percent or something to the um, Agilent, which I is my sort of reference standard LCR meter, the uh, U1733C. Something just went beep, something's about to turn off here. And of course the uh, low cost LCR meter, the XTEC uh, one, is pretty good value. I rather like this. The, uh, the DE5000, yeah, I don't know, it does have the four terminal uh, measurement capability. These things, by the way, um, if you're after an LCR meter, um, I can I can tell you right now. I said it in my previous review of these uh, smart tweezers, in and that um, uh, really, if you're after just an LCR meter, there you know you're much better off buying one of these um, uh, you know handheld ones. Really, these are just for the convenience form factor of the really nice tweezer attachment because you can actually get tweezer attachments for these but of course once you hook those on you've got leads that then dangle across your bench and if you've got smd parts all over your bench your leads can just scatter them everywhere really ugly that's um the advantage of these uh smart tweezers made in canada smart tweezers looks like a reasonably um decent advance on the uh, previous model but anyway these are expensive this is probably don't quote me but probably the most expensive lcr meter here, I think it may even be more than the uh, Agilent one, or very similar price anyway. But yeah, they they are cool, but for a very niche market anyway. So, ah, well, that's Mailbag Monday. There you go. Sorry, I'm out of time. See how long that took to shoot this? I don't know how long the final footage would be, but 6.41, I've got to get home. Sagan goes to bed at 7. I've got to be home to kiss him good night before he goes to bed. So anyway, thank you very much, people, for sending in that uh, Mailbag stuff and i will try yes i always say it i'll try and get through the rest of the stuff oh and oh almost forgot john boxel's new book arduino workshop here it is hands-on introduction 65 projects john boxel you know um fellow blogger from uh, tronicstuff.com does really good i probably should do a little video review but anyway it's a really really good book and from a no starch press of course who do some really good books, and they've, uh, um, I can, uh, printed in the US of A, no, it's printed in China, rubbish, printed in the United States of America, and, um, I do actually get a, uh, thank you in here somewhere, anyway, look at all the stuff in here, it's brilliant, if you're after Arduino, um, stuff, I've, um, had a reasonably good, uh, flick through it, and it is really, really good, and, uh, 
it's yeah it is really quite good so people where I am I there I am Dave Jones thank you very much Dave Jones thank you to thank you thank you very much John to yeah Jonathan Oxer as well's in there Lamore they're all in there there you go Nathan Seidel everyone's in there thanking everyone so yeah if you're after a book on Arduino um, stuff then this takes you step by step it really is quite good I highly recommend it to a beginner or um, anyone there's you know basic electronics not just Arduino um, stuff there's some electronics uh, fundamentals you know resistors identification all sorts of stuff and it really is and it's a massive book it really is quite good I won't go through it some people complained last time I practically gave the whole book away as I went through but it John has been working on this for a long time I know and it really shows and it's like 300 and yeah, you can do lead cube stuff great absolutely brilliant I love it animate in the lead matrix and then it goes on to do uh, Wi-Fi projects there's 65 projects all up uh, GPS stuff wireless tags RFID NFC I think the internet cellular comms so yeah it's got GSM stuff every project you could possibly imagine for the Arduino is in here and he's done an awesome job and it is like 300 there's source code everything in there everything you could possibly want all your Arduino goodness and it's like 360 something pages so you're really getting your money's worth and I'm a big sucker for a good index and this looks like a good index there's the LCR meter turning off and telling me I should call it quits so excellent work John from Tronic stuff that's available from um, no starch press and if you buy it you get the PDF version as well so do check it out uh, John Boxel's Arduino workshop beauty highly recommended catch you next time welcome to the EEB blog I'm your host Dave Jones hi Hi. Hi. Dave Jones. Welcome to the EV blog. I'm your host, Dave Jones. Dave Jones. Benny. Hi. Benny. Hi. 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 Dave Jones. Hi. Benny. 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 Welcome to the EV blog. Hi. Dave Jones. Welcome to the EEB Block. I'm your host, Dave Jones.